After taking the unconscious Mannequin back to police headquarters and propping him up against the front door, the Blue Beetle sped on his way to the home of Charles Cochran. Arriving at his destination, he enters the Cochran home by means of a skeleton key. And hearing voices, he slips into an adjoining room and listens. Over here, um, here's your check, Dr. Barford, for $7,500. Your fee for uh, operating on old man Ripley. The operation was successful, but the patient died. <laughs> yeah, but what about the profit on the stock? Yeah, we'll settle that when we complete the transaction. I'm carrying your account under the name of Smythe, you know. Yes, but what if... Oh, are you worrying about the intern who was arrested? Yes, frankly, I am. Well, don't worry about him. He'll never testify in any court. I had someone bail him out, and he's here in this house now. We're sending him away tonight on a one-way ride. What? Well, you don't mean... Exactly. Oh, but you can't do that. Why, that's... Murder? Yes, Dr. Bertlett. Murder. Just like your operation on my partner today. True? One of my men short-circuited the lights at the hospital, and another one disguised as an orderly dropped the stench bomb. But you, you, Dr. Bartlett, severed the artery in banker Ridley's throat. The Blue Beetle! Yes, the Blue Beetle. He's going to nip a band of murderers. Ah, Emma! You call, boys? Don't move, any of you. I've got men outside, and they're coming in to take you. Pardon me, Mr. Blue Beetle. I doubt that statement. I happen to know that it is the Blue Beetle's proud boast that he works alone. Grab him, men. Get away. Get away, Raymond. I'm going to shoot the Blue Beetle. That's what you'll think, Cochran. Come here, Raymond. I'm going to give you a little ride through the air. Dr. George's mistake. You're not Dr. Raymond. Here's your knife, Raymond. Into his heart. Rip up the blue beat. Right, boys. Oh. Right on the toe of my boot guts. And now you, Raymond, up you go. Oh, no, senor. And across the room and your boss is black. Oh, Blue Beetle, get those hands up. Young Samuel Ridley. You must be Houdini to have gotten out of those bonds, or else I've forgotten my sailor knots. You've forgotten something else, Blue Beetle. I'll take whatever you took from my father's safe. Certainly, Ridley. Here you are. Good. I thought this gun would make you see me. Foxed you, Ridley. Now, all of you, stand over there. I'm going to release the intern you're holding prisoner, and then... Ah, ah, good to beetle is out like a light. I'll tie him up and throw some water on the window there. Right, boy. I'm getting out of here. Oh, no, you're not, Dr. Bartlett. I need the famous surgeon for one more little operation. Oh, no. Don't no. worry, Dr. Bartlett. It won't be murdered this time. But I I've got a better idea. You're just a little operation on the Blue Beetle's vocal cords and the muscles of his arms. What good will that do? He won't be able to speak or write when you get through with him. And he doesn't dare turn himself over to the police. No, it's fiendish. But necessary. Gus. Yeah, boss? Take the Blue Beetle into the other room and put him with the intern. Then come back here. Okay, boss. Gee. <laughs> He's heavy. Maybe he's dead, boss. He'll wish he were before I get through with him. The Blue Beetle's nipping days are over. What will happen to the Blue Beetle? Will the arch-fiend Cochran be able to force Dr. Bartlett to maim him for life? How can the Blue Beetle get out of this spot? Not a soul knows where he is. Let's look in on Dr. Franz in his little apothecary shop. I wonder... I wonder how Danny's making out. I think I'll close up shop and work a while in my laboratory. Ah, there. There, the shades are down. Now I... I'll just bolt this door. That's it. Now, put out the light. Ah, now perhaps I can locate Danny with my new radio locator. He took his portable wireless phone with him this time, but he hasn't called me. Maybe he's in trouble. Hmm. Uh-huh. Mm, I can't seem to locate him. I'll just swing it north two more degrees. 
There. Now let's see. Ah, that's got him. The contact meter registers pretty weak, though. His vitality must be low. Now, now perhaps if I connected up my radio energizer to this locator, I could shoot some vitality to him through the ether. I'll just connect these two wires here, so... And then turn on the energizer and let him have it. Ah, there. There it goes, Danny. I hope it's reaching you and giving you renewed strength. It's all I can do for you. Are the energizing rays sent out by Dr. Franz reaching the Blue Beetle? Has he again managed to outwit a clever and ruthless gang of murderous racketeers? How can he escape their clutches? Let's look in on the little room in the Cochrane home where the Blue Beetle was imprisoned with the intern from the city hospital. Where am I? What's that noise? It's a midget antenna on my helmet. Franz must be trying out his new radio locator. What's happening to me? I feel as if I were being pumped full of energy. I can burst these burns easily. Well, who's that over there on that cot? The hospital intern, of course. You, can you hear me? Shake your head if you can. Oh, you can. Wait until I take that gag out of your mouth. There, that's better. Now I'll cut your bonds with my magic ray. The, the blue beetle. That's right. How do you feel? A little weak. Now hold my hand a minute. Get some energy from me. Mm. Mm. Now. Now, do you think you could hold a gun on some men if I help you? I could hold it alone. You certainly pepped me up. Huh? How did you do it? That's a secret. Now, here is your chance to be a hero. I'll do anything I can to get out of here. Good. Have you a fountain pen? Uh, yes. Uh, here it is. Well, you hold it like this, you see, like a pistol. Uh, this way? That's right. That'll fool those men in the other room until we can pick up a real gun inside. Now, you follow me. We're going in and clean up those rats. What's the matter with your eyes? They're shining like searchlights. Due to a new invention of a friend of mine. Come on. Gee! Boss, look at his eyes. This man, he is devil. Not to me, he isn't. Don't you... Don't, don't, don't. It's no use, Cochran. You can't injure the Blue Beetle. Throw down that gun. Drop it or I'll blast you all with my magic ray. You better drop the gun, boss. All right, Blue Beetle. You win up to this point. But how are you going to turn us over to the police? Why, you don't dare... Yeah, you intern. It's your chance to get even with the doctor and this gang who are holding you prisoner. Pick up that gun and keep these men covered until I tie them up. Okay. Here comes the law. I called the police on my wireless telephone. You'll all be in safe hands soon, safe for the citizens of this great city. No more will your secret machinations bring distress to honest investors. Gentlemen, the Blue Beetle's job is done. You'll soon be paying the penalty of your dishonest schemes. I'll leave you to the tender mercies of the district attorney. In the early hours of the morning, patrolman Dan Garrett, no longer the Blue Beetle, sat in Dr. Fran's living room. Uh, Danny, you did a swell job. And now, now you'd better get some rest. Yeah, I guess you're right, Doc. Uh, I'll see who it is. Uh, just a minute. Just a minute, I'm coming. Is Patrolman Garrett here? Uh, yes, sir. Who wants him? The chief. Everyone's called back to duty. Why, what's happened? Some crooks have started a reign of terror, and they've threatened to blow up the city. <laughs> There's no 
no rest for the Blue Beetle or for Patrolman Dan Garrett. What will develop in the next chapter of Dan Garrett's life? As the Blue Beetle, will he be able to run down and apprehend the members of this dynamite ring? Can he outsmart this deadly gang of underworld characters? These questions will be answered in the next episode of The Blue Beetle. Here's the Blue Beetle himself to say a few words. Folks, the moral of this story is that the confidence of our friends often gives us new strength and new courage. And also that our confidence and friendship for others often helps them. In other words, confidence and friendship among mankind is vital. And if everyone is sincere in everyday life, they will aid others or be aided by others, just as Dr. Franz sent new vigor and vitality to me in order that I might rise and fight. So my advice to young and old is to cultivate the friendship and confidence of your fellow men. And through that friendship and confidence, find new strength and courage to face the problems of each day. The Blue Beetle is a copyrighted Fox feature appearing in Mystery Men Comics magazine on sale at your newsstand. The Blue Beetle is on the air twice a week on this same station. Consult the broadcast schedule in your local newspapers. And don't forget to listen in.